Hi, hi, Prasanthu. Hi, um, am I audible? Yes, sir, you're just fine. Go okay, ahead. great. I'm great. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Um, so, uh, sh so uh, should we get started uh, with team? Um, hi, hey, yes, yes, yes pleasure to be here. Really glad I could join you. Um, yeah, yeah, despite social distance. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it's a pity we couldn't uh, have you here physically, but we're really excited to uh, conduct the session. Um, so, okay, so I'll, I'll do this a bit more formally. So it you know, gives us to interview Professor Andrew Eng today. Um, he has been highly influential as a researcher, educator, and a leader in the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, he Coursera, which is the world's leading uh, MOOC platform, and he was also the uh, founding lead of the Google Brain team. Uh, he was the chief scientist at Baidu and launched um, uh, companies like deeplearning.ai, landing.ai, and the AI Fund. Uh, and he's currently an adjunct prof professor at Stanford University's Third Department of Science. Uh, and last but not the least, he's recognized by millions of uh, machine learning students and practitioners in India and around the world, uh, thanks to his pioneering in the area. So, um, Please join me and the TechFest team at IIT Bombay in welcoming Professor Andrew Eng. So thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited to have you here. Um, and just a no, brief introduction. Lot, so I am, uh, yeah, uh, I am Preeti. I'm a faculty member in the computer science department here at IIT Bombay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank, thank, thank you, Preeti. And thank you also for having me at the um, TechFest. I think, you know, the, the COVID is a, is global track uh, yeah. uh, and uh, one tiny silver lining is I'm really glad to have joined you at TechFest <laughs> this year despite the fact that we're staying home with social distancing. I um, hope to visit Bombay in person. I was in India a couple years ago to speak at NASCOM. Yes. Didn't have the opportunity to visit IIT Bombay but I remember mm -hmm. looking on uh, TripAdvisor and looking at the pictures of some of the some of the <laughs> things in Bombay I would have loved. So maybe, maybe some <laughs> Maybe sometime, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll uh, kind of wait for that <laughs> to happen sometime soon. Um, okay, so I, I'll uh, kind of kickstart this. So as we just heard, uh, you have a very kind of diverse set of experiences in your career. Uh, you've founded companies, you've led uh, large AI teams at both Google and Baidu, and you're also an academic. Uh, so could you tell us a bit more about your personal story? Can you walk us through your career and what you think are some of the most defining moments? Yeah, so um, let's see. Uh, I think I've been, um, I started getting interested in AI when I was a teenager. Um, my father's a doctor, still practicing in Singapore, and he was interested mm -hmm. in applying AI for medical diagnosis. So I was very fortunate, uh, you know, as a teenager to, mm -hmm. to the, well, I basics of coding to have learned about um, neural networks uh, uh, from and, and mm -hmm. very early, you know, today yeah. we consider these entries, slightly embarrassing forms of AI, but I was lucky to learn about it. And I remember when I was in high school, um, I once had this internship where I was an office mm -hmm. assistant, uh, this is in Singapore, and I just remember doing a lot of photocopying. Um, and the highlight of my job, <laughs> you know, that internship was getting to use the shredder uh, because that was much <laughs> more fun than <laughs> I remember yeah. thinking, boy, I'm spending so much time doing this. If only we could build something to automate all this photocopying I have to do, yeah. maybe I could, we could free up my time, others' time to pursue higher level tasks. So from then, mm -hmm. um, from, from that age, I've been, I've been excited about AI. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, I was really fortunate to have had so many great mentors from people uh, mm -hmm. Andrew Moore and Tom Mitchell uh, and, and, and Michael Currens when I was just an undergrad uh, to, you know, mm -hmm. to Michael Jordan, Stuart Russell, Chitendra Malik in my PhD and, and so on. So throughout my life, I, I, I've been blessed with uh, a lot more good mentors than, than, than I had any reason to expect and that, that mm -hmm. really helped me a lot. Um, and, and even today, I, I, I find myself fortunate to have friends and mentors in Canton to help me out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, so I think maybe I mean, there's a related question. Um, I mean, your 
of course, one of the most prominent names in machine learning, but um, in your deep learning specialization on Coursera, you interviewed other thought leaders uh, in a series called Heroes of Deep Learning. So um, have there been um, mentors or individuals who are particularly inspiring uh, during your career? Um, I think, well, certainly uh, everyone <coughs> in the Heroes <laughs> of Deep Learning series was someone that I uh, yeah. you know, uh, that, that I found inspiring or enjoy working with or, or really, uh, everyone that I really admired. But I think, you know, it's, it's been funny how um, little conversations that you wouldn't even think about, right, uh, changes the course of, of, of your thinking. So one of the most memorable conversations so that I still remember to this day was um, way back, over 10 years ago, this was maybe, this was maybe 2007, uh, 2008, um, after uh, NeurIPS, at that time still called NIPS, but after NeurIPS conference is over, uh, Jeff Hinton and I got together uh, and we found uh, outside the NeurIPS conference at a, at a cafeteria, uh, you know, at, a, at a food court. And at that time, no one knew who you know, either of us was, so we could just sit <laughs> in the cafeteria and, and, and chat about ideas. And Jeff told me uh, why he felt most of AI um, uh, why AI meets the focus on unsupervised learning, but it was just writing on a napkin, right? Laying out, this is the number mm -hmm. of synapses in the human brain, this is the number of seconds a typical person will live. Uh, you and I will live about 10 to the second seconds, or two, two by 10 to the seven, seven right? And mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of orders of magnitude, even if you get one bit of information per second mm -hmm. in your life, there's just no way uh, the number of bits you could get is much less than the number mm -hmm. of... Um, uh, synapses uh, mm -hmm. and 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 thus maybe the number of ways we need to train in our brain. And so we just sat down, drew things out in the napkin. I thought, yep, this is a you know very simplistic <laughs> argument. This makes total sense. And I then mm -hmm. started to do much more work in um, unsupervised learning and scaling that up. Uh, now, mm -hmm. it turns out we got some of that wrong. You know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Supervised learning wound up uh, really. I think that, was, that, that, that really took off. But in the early days, mm -hmm. I thought, a lot of us thought that scaling up, we, we got the part about scaling up, right? But all of us um, mm -hmm. really overemphasized unsupervised learning in the early days. But so it's conversations like mm -hmm. that, um, uh, that, mm -hmm. that have over the, over the course of my career, uh, and I'm still very grateful to this day to many individuals um, uh, you know, that, that sat me down and told me whatever. Oh, I'll tell you another story. Um, Satinda Singh uh, is, a, is a professor. Um, I once gave a talk at the ICML conference um, and I walked off stage you know, feeling bad because I thought I, I, I gave a bad talk. I didn't think I did a good job. Um, and so a few of my friends came and said, hey, Andrew, what a good talk. And that actually made me feel even worse. And Satinda Singh was <laughs> the one guy that came up to me and said, hey, Andrew, you had too much in that talk. And you know, and, and he was right. I felt the same thing and he told me the truth. And to this day, I still remember that. Uh, and to this day, I, I still am grateful for Satinda for telling it to me straight when I honestly didn't do that good job giving the talk. No. So maybe I would say, you know, all of us are surrounded by, by friends and mentors that have our best interests at heart. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's worth you know, listening to them. Not agreeing with them all the time, but, but, but listening yeah. to them to see what we can learn from them. Yeah, that's that's really valuable uh, insights, and I suspect others will have anecdotes or stories like this about conversations with you uh, that have inspired them <laughs> in, the, in the same way. Um, so, uh, if you could tell um, all of us, so two years ago you founded uh, an ecosystem of AI companies that uh, kind of all serve very different purposes. Could you tell us a little more about what these companies do? Um, yeah. So. Um, the rise of AI means that there are a lot of opportunities for us to use this exciting technology to go out to, uh, to move the world forward, to help people in various ways. And I felt that there are multiple things that need to be done. So the ecosystem of teams I'm building um, work on what I think are a few different key aspects of what AI needs to do in order to, to reach its full potential of, of helping a lot of people. Um, so deeplearning.ai is our mm -hmm. educational arm, and we are working to help individuals break into AI, uh, learn mm -hmm. about uh, learn about you know, create technology, and then learn how to use it in a in a practical way. So from the deep learning specialization, 
that I taught to the NLP specialization that we just released a few weeks ago um, uh, to the you know, AI for medicine uh, specialization to AI for everyone to a bunch more that we're working on. Uh, I hope mm -hmm. that deep learning.ai can be a leading force that you know students can go to if they're trying to figure out where to learn about deep learning or NLP or, or other topics. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think AI is our enterprise-facing side. Um, so the teams that I led at Google and Baidu played a role in you know, helping them, them become leading AI companies. But mm -hmm. I personally, um, you know, others can keep working in software internet companies to help them be AI enabled. I, I personally, some should do it as a worthy thing, but I've done it twice and I'm kind of bored. I want to do something else. <laughs> so landing AI, uh, it's focused on helping all of the other companies, uh, especially ones outside the software internet sector, consume, outside consumer mm -hmm. software internet, adopt AI. And this turns out to be incredibly hard and incredibly exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the way that we used to ship uh, speech recognition or computer vision systems at the large consumer internet companies, they just don't work for the, for the industrial mm -hmm. companies or for other industries. Um, mm -hmm. So Land AI is focused on that, and 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 finally, AI Fund is a venture studio that creates new new companies from scratch. Um, there's a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. for new projects to be done in AI across. You know, we're doing project in uh, um, logistics, in education, in healthcare, in talent workforce management. Um, so there's so many opportunities for projects, and I think creating new companies is an important mechanism. But getting these projects mm -hmm. done, and so AI Fund is a you know, 175.6 million dollar video that systematically creates mm -hmm. new companies to try to go after what we think are meaningful projects. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing! <laughs> uh, yeah. So I actually work on speech recognition. So when you mentioned about how you know speech recognition systems don't really kind of work uh, really well in real settings, and that really struck a chord. Um, uh, like, yeah, you know, uh, I, I, you know I've, I've been in so many, I've, I've been in so many conversations where the conversation would go like this, right? The machine learning engineer will say, "Look, you know, my speech system does really well on the test set. You know, please yeah, celebrate." Yeah. And, right, exactly. and and then, yeah. but then the product owner says, "You know, it doesn't work. Look at all these use cases." Um, <laughs> yeah. And yes. then the machine yeah. learning engineer says. But look, it does all on the test set, and, and, and the conversation <laughs> yeah. unfortunately ends. I think as engineers, as, as we, I'm sure you, I'm, I'm sure you feel this way too, pre, 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 yeah. I feel our responsibility isn't just to make a system work on the test set; it's to make it yeah. solve an actual, you know, practical problem, business problem, scientific problem, application problem. And I yeah. think we need to get better at that. The problem is doing well on the test set is what we're good at doing. You know, it's yeah. a test set. You can download it. You can publish paper ones, but but the real world. Um, but there's still a step to bridge it to deployment, yeah. which turns out to be really hard and really complicated. So, yeah. and I find this yesterday, um, uh, it is uh, 4th of July here in the United States, it's a little bit of spare time. Yeah. So what I was actually doing yesterday was um, uh, trying to jot down some notes on how to make exactly that process more systematic. So this process of mm -hmm. how to bridge the proof of concept to production gap is something that um, I spend my spare time thinking about it because I think it's actually a very important and exciting problem. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, that's amazing. I really look forward to, uh, yeah, uh, where this heads. Um, and I'm just, yeah. uh, just an aside. So ACL is going to happen this coming week, uh, ACL 2020. And so, you know, uh, all the videos are uploaded and now there are all these channels where people are talking about how the auto captioning of the videos is just horrendous in quality um, and so uh, the ASR yeah even though it's supposed to be working in kind of uh, broad settings it really fails when it's exposed to you know large number of accents and so on um, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and the interesting yeah. thing is uh, multiple groups here including me right uh, yeah. uh, uh, and, and I think there was a highly cited one in by Microsoft, but a lot of groups have published papers saying that uh, speech recognition outperforms human level performance. Uh, <laughs> human so parity, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah so, so why is it that we can publish peer review academic results saying we're better than humans, <laughs> but you know, in ACL, people are complaining. And, and I think <laughs> the problem is when we publish saying we do better than human level performance, there's usually yeah. um, 
you know, in, in lab conditions, specific yeah. test set, training set, same yeah. distribution of the test set, that lets us get that result. And I stand behind the results. The results are great. It's actually really yeah. good progress. Not yeah. criticizing yeah. the results. It's yeah. actually great progress. We reach yeah. that milestone. But there's this other problem beyond reaching human level performance on the academic test set. And that yeah. second problem, yeah. I think um, uh, we all need to keep working on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you just mentioned that you you visited India a couple of years back and spoke at uh, NASCOM. Um, so uh, what do you think India should be doing in AI and focusing on? So I've been very encouraged a number of people um, in India learn about AI, you know, taking online courses, uh, forming groups, discussing ideas. It, it, it really kind of, I feel like India... Um, uh, has an opportunity to move up the value chain. I think until mm -hmm. up, up until now, there's a very large um, IT professional services industry in India, and that's great. It was mm -hmm. wonderful uh, economic progress, uh, help, uh, creating tremendous value for India and for the world. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, whereas um, Silicon Valley, um, as well as being, have mature tech ecosystems for internet companies, um, the rise of AI, I think the opportunity for India is not to build what Silicon Valley and Beijing built, you know, five or 10 years ago, is to mm. leapfrog and try to build the next innovation. So, mm -hmm. for example, you know, there are already pretty good web search engines. So I don't think the next competition is how to build the next web search engine. You know, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. India could, I don't know. But, but you know, so existing web search is already pretty good. Uh, uh, but I think it's the, the opportunity will be uh, just as mobile phones leapfrog landlines, right? uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and countries that did not have a landlines were able to embrace mobile faster, and mobile payment takes off, mm -hmm. it's taking off faster outside the United States in the United States. Um, I think the opportunity mm -hmm. for India is giant AI, leapfrog, create a next um, set of applications uh, and products, mm -hmm. uh, and, and also to move up the value chain, to go from, you know, uh, uh, IT professional services to mm -hmm. uh, AI services or even AI products. Um, right. I find the uh, energy, um, you know, in the academic sphere, uh, in the corporate sphere, in the entrepreneurship sphere in India, very exciting. Every now and then, I get, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, my, my, my team gets a message from India saying, hey, I have a, this new startup idea, and, and what do you think? Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of cool things happening in India. So I encourage people mm -hmm. to to keep on working at it. Um, uh, and I think Great. the option to move from is, is there. Oh, and maybe just, one, just, just, and just one other thought, you know, I feel like, um, actually, you know, one, one I, I, I never got to, I, I said I never got to visit Bombay. Um, I would mm. love to see some of the tourist attractions, you know, Gateway of India or whatever, your famous tourist attractions. Mm -hmm. There was one other place that I really wanted to visit in Bombay, which was um, Dharavi. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. But I feel yes, like yeah. um, just just learn more, right? I, I feel like mm -hmm. um, uh, India uh, still has a lot of room for economic development. Um, mm -hmm. And I think uh, there's a lot of opportunity for wealth creation. It's clear that AI is creating tremendous wealth uh, and will continue to create tremendous amounts of wealth. But I hope that all of the students and entrepreneurs and business leaders and people listening to this will think about how to create wealth not in, in a way that 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 makes sure it's fairly shared um mm -hmm. uh, and, and 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 i think i i i want to go to 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 Dharavi. i would have loved to go frankly to to learn mm -hmm. a little bit more about economic growth and how to help really the poorest and the, help, help help the most vulnerable and help the poorest in our society um mm -hmm. uh, achieve a better life for themselves. Like, what, what is the meaning of life? I think one of the most meaningful things in life is to help other people achieve their dreams, whatever they are. So, so I hope that, you know, people working on AI uh, will, will have a set of values that, that means like, don't, don't use AI just to make money, use AI to make other people's lives better. And that's I mean, such an inspiring message. So I, I, I'm sure uh, it will reach, uh, it will really reach uh, kind of wide um, um, okay, so um, another question is, um, so this is kind of veering away a little from uh, what we've talked about so far, but so there's a lot of uh, media coverage about um, AI 
um, being this kind of uh, evil force which is going to eliminate jobs. Um, so what is your response to um, those outside the field who are very kind of skeptical of um, the benefits of AI and the progress of AI, this kind of uncharted progress? Yeah, um, you know, I think the reality is AI, uh, some parts of AI is automation on steroids. And just as the last wave of factory automation, say, disrupted a lot of jobs, I think AI automation mm -hmm. will transform work, including automating uh, uh, some number of individuals' jobs. Um, so I don't think we should slow down progress, but I think we mm -hmm. must make sure that people whose lives affect, are affected are treated well uh, and treated mm -hmm. compassionately. So um, mm -hmm. once upon a time, if you get inside an elevator, there was an elevator operator. You know, there, there was someone who would say, mm -hmm. hey, please speak me to the, to the third floor, and they will operate the elevator. Um, and then okay. someone invented automated elevators. I don't think the right thing to do was to preserve the elevator operator's job uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think, you know, I, I don't think we need people operating our elevators for us. And that invention was a good step forward for the efficiency mm -hmm. of society. Um, but what the problem is, is if we as a society go to the elevator operator and throw him or her up on the street and just say, tough, mm -hmm. you're on your own, we don't care about you. I think that's the problem. And I think it is a real problem. Um, so mm -hmm. I don't think we should hold back the progress of society or of technology. But I think that, um, you know, I, I, I feel like we're, we're, we're all in this together, right? I know Earth is a small <laughs> planet. It's, it feels like there are a lot of us around, but I actually feel like we're all in it together. And, um, uh, and if um, we're inventing um, technology that could hurt that elevator operator's job, uh, and not just a job, but a livelihood, you know, the, the paycheck, they go home, they use their paycheck to pay for their kids' food and tuition. I mean, these are people we're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. Then I think we have an obligation uh, as, 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 as society to create a safety net, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, give them enough to live on uh, ideally and also provide an education so that they can learn enough so that they can then take on some other job other than operating mm -hmm. an elevator if society truly doesn't need human elevator operators anymore. So I think yeah. I think corporations, uh, individuals, as well as governments, um, all have a have an important role to play. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe and, and I'll, I'll I'll share one other thought. You know, when I was younger, uh, when I was an engineer, I didn't understand mm -hmm. how interconnected the world is. Um, so when mm -hmm. I was younger, I definitely thought, oh, I'll be a good engineer. I'll write code. I'll just get my stuff working. And then those government mm -hmm. problems. So yeah, whatever. It's not 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 my business. Some, someone, yeah, maybe we should all vote vote who we think is, is the best for the for the world or for the country, and then and then. But but as I get older, I think I start to realize how um, interconnected the world is, and mm -hmm. how our actions um, sometimes has have has has unforeseen effects. Um, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes you can't, you can't take responsibility for everything because some effects are very hard to foresee. But to the extent we're able to, uh, to the extent we're able to um, uh, think about the impact of the products we're building. You know, like if you implement a social media platform to support freedom of speech, mm -hmm. that sounds like a great thing. But if it leads to toxic speech, then I think, you know, if we created mm -hmm. a problem um, uh, unintentionally, we, we, it's our response wants for you to own up and, and, and also <laughs> yeah. play an active role for example. So I can't always foresee the impact of my actions, but I definitely try uh, uh, and, and I hope all of us in the AI community, you know, can, well, I, I think we should all do our best. You can't, you, you, you can't yeah. ask anyone to do more than that. Do you think we should all do our best? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think with the current uh, pandemic and the current crisis, um, the only the silver lining is that we really realize we're all in this together, and that message has not been. Um, it, it's so clear now that you know the whole the the, the interconnectedness that you described right now. Um, it's just so apparent now, right? When we're all kind of jointly fighting against this uh, crisis. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and and I think. Those of us, you know, and, and I think, frankly, those of us in tech are actually really fortunate. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. I think 
uh, the tech world for the most part, you know, can support working from home much better than other industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you, even here in the United States, I worry a lot about the people about internet access. So I think I can sound myself mm -hmm. fortunate. I can speak to you from home and I can afford yeah. the decent internet access, you know, so, so that's great. But I read about the stories of, you know, the father uh, that has to choose between paying for internet access versus using mm -hmm. the $60 a month to buy some better food for his daughter, right? So I read stories yeah. like these in the news, uh, in, in, in the United States as well, you know, that there's poverty uh, yeah. all around the world, including mm -hmm. the United States. And, and I worry um, if the wonderful software products and things we're building, if, um, if we are doing enough to hold mm -hmm. that poor, that, that, that other, that, that, uh, and, and then of course, there are also plenty of people uh, uh, all around the world, uh, including India, many other countries that don't even have internet access and are not disconnected. Yeah, yeah. And so, right, and, and right. again, there, there is a, there is a term called a, a, a shoot. What's the word? I'm forgetting. Like a compassion. Um, where you know, there, there's so many things going on in the world, and you read about them all in the news because <laughs> the world is so connected. I, I know sometimes it feels like there's just too many things we all need to care about, <laughs> yeah. uh, from poverty yeah. to yeah. The, the racial justice. The, so, but, but I think uh, if 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 all of us can at least pick some of the worthy causes. Uh, to deeply care about yeah. and, and move them forward. Uh, um, I feel like, yeah, there's some causes that I'm personally, right, um, I have to admit, mm -hmm. I'm less focused on. You know, like, I think, um, uh, I think the plastic straws, you know, harming turtles, yes, it's a thing. <laughs> I feel sad that turtles are harmed. I care a lot about environment. I care a lot about climate change. Uh, so I yeah. do fight for climate change, but I decided the plastic straws is a great cause. But I just, again, no disrespect. I think all the people fighting against plastic straws are doing uh, is an important cause. But we, we have to choose what, 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 what to focus on. So I'm, I'm trying, to, uh, right. trying right. to, to, to be disciplined as well, to pick the things that I think are best you know, qualified to fight for, which I wish I could fight for even more causes. Um, uh, right. <laughs> um, OK, so I, I think I'll uh, kind of wrap this up with um, a uh, parting question. So what advice would you like to give to people uh, who are starting out or um, looking at, you know, you know, making it in the field of machine learning? Um, so your students, anyone who's uh, kind of trying to start out in ML? Uh, um, let's see. Um, you know, I, I uh, maybe I'll give a short answer. Um, uh, the, the, there's a long answer, which is, I think I actually gave a talk at ACM that's on YouTube. It's like an hour long talk on advice for people looking to break into AI, or, or maybe I did another one. Um, so, so there are a couple uh, like hour long videos of me talking mm -hmm. about this. Um, but I think, um, boy, uh, I think the way I choose what to do with my time, even today, um, I try to choose projects that enable me to keep learning, even to this day, that, that's, that's high up on my list of um, when I'm prioritizing how to choose my time, how, how to spend my time, and, and also projects mm -hmm. that I think could have a meaningful impact. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so I hope that, you know, choose projects where you can choose projects and teams and organizations you can keep learning and, and, and do work where um, you can have a big impact. Um, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I Larry Page is actually really good at Google. He was really always encouraging teams to do things so that if you succeed, it's hard enough to make projects successful. So if, if your project succeeds, will you actually have had a big impact? Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think finally, you know, the journey is long. It's really hard to, to, to change the world um, in a year. And I think it's probably mm -hmm. impossible for most to do it in a weekend. I certainly don't know how to change the world in a weekend. Um, so rather than having spurts of excitement or spurts of all-nighters over one weekend, it's more important to um, plan for the long term and to keep learning, to keep working at it. Uh, we live in a world which um, is far from perfect, but the opportunities are more available than ever um, to mm -hmm. people that learn the right skills, to learn relevant skills. Um, uh, and so mm -hmm. I think... You know, I, I, I encourage everyone to keep learning um, uh, and 
and that and, and take the time to build the foundation and then work on projects that 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 you think can move the world forward um and if ever mm -hmm. You know, if and if and just if anyone listening in thinks if some days some days things seem dark, whether you're working so hard, not you're making progress, mm -hmm. paper got rejected, happens to everyone. I've had plenty of papers rejected. All my all, all of my friends in academia, <laughs> plenty of papers rejected. Yeah. Uh, things doesn't always go well. Uh, I, have, yeah. you know, I make mistakes or work. I work on a project for a year only to figure out you know it doesn't work. It happens to all of us. Yeah. I would say, keep learning and. Keep at it because the opportunities are there and if you keep building your knowledge then 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 you have a good chance of getting there eventually great i think that was a perfect kind of uh, sign off message um so uh, i'll just like to formally thank you uh, professor andrew eng for taking time out of your busy schedule chatting with us i mean giving us these kind of very positive and uplifting messages was it was really really pleasure to chat with you uh, so thanks again for uh, taking this time off and i i hope uh, you will be able to visit us in bombay uh, sometime soon in mumbai yeah thanks thanks a lot <laughs> thanks a lot for having me and i really hope i I'd love to go to visit someday so i look forward to yes. it yes yeah you. we'd love to host you at it yeah thank you so much